Mendelspod.com Advancing life science research, connecting people and ideas. A lot of people throw around the term nanopore, but they're really not that nano. We are actually utilizing and repetitively creating and controlling a 1.4 angstrom precise to sub-angstrom dimension orifice. Uh -huh. And the only thing they can do is biology. And the only way that biology can create these structures at that scale is self-assembly. And the connection between the origin of life and what we're doing is it's all based on self-assembly. That's how life arose in abiogenesis. Non-life to life was self-assembly based on the fundamental um, chemical properties of the, the constituent molecules. And that's how our technology, for no money at all, self-assembles these crazy, tiny, super precise, completely repeatable nanostructures that you couldn't, in your wildest imagination, even spend a trillion dollars and get out of a normal semiconductor fab. Hmm. Okay, I see your intrigue there. Even coming from the, the high-tech side, the semiconductor side, the, the biology is doing something you guys couldn't do. That's right. I mean, I'm intimately familiar with the, the tolerances um, of, of process technology because we dealt with the lowest level, transistor level issues at Maxim. And, you know, when somebody says they're making something that's 60 nanometers, well, it's not really 60 nanometers. It's 60 nanometers plus or minus some margin, usually 10%, 20%. Only biology has the power to put atoms precisely in position with respect to the other atoms to the point where you can actually form uh, crystals. And so essentially, uh, at a micro scale, our measurement is based on the formation of a tiny uh, single molecular complex crystal. That's essentially what it is. And so you can't uh, make that type of precision any other way, hmm. in this universe at least. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So what most excites you about uh, Genia? Is it, it's making the tools. Well, the tool, DNA sequencing is just the beginning. This tool can do some crazy stuff. Uh. Because basically what we have here is a direct a transistor to a biochemical component interface. It's yeah. a direct interface. That's what we've all been looking for. Yeah, exactly. And you can leverage this. I, I mean, I tongue-in-cheek like to say we're, we're going to create Borg. I mean, basically, this is a direct, board, board, board. you know, in Star Trek, that it's oh, part, yeah, yeah. part human, part machine <laughs> entity, right? Now, that's uh -huh. sort of the, 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 the tongue-in-cheek kind of sci-fi view, but really, that's what it is. We're, we're creating an interface that lets us directly combine um, uh, solid-state entities with wet entities. You know, there's a sci-fi terminology, wetware. I'm a real fan of sci-fi. Huh. A lot of us nerdy guys are. Uh -huh. and, uh, and you're creating it. And we're creating the wetware to um, hardware interface, yes. And that'll let you create all kinds of amazing synergies. Um, um, and DNA sequencing is just one thing you can do with it. One thing that I'm uh, excited about, which I kind of learned about from my academic cohorts when I was in school, and they have a lot of great ideas, it's just they don't know how to operationalize them, which is kind of what we're about, uh -huh. is um, the possibility of uh, software control of translation, um, which is something that I've sort of that's a long-term dream. Uh -huh. And that means? Well, uh, there's a core machine at, at, at the center of all life on this planet, which most people aren't aware of. Uh, it's called the ribosome. And when you think about the implications of what the ribosome is and what it does, and how everything alive on this planet utilizes it, um, you realize its power and its significance. And when you put that thing that took, that, that, that really initiated the spark that was the spark that created life on this planet. And you put it under software control, you can start to do some really wild things. I see, in the sense of synthetic biology? You betcha, yeah. because the central dogma says DNA to RNA to protein, why not just put that whole information path, and as Stefan has correctly pointed out, it's just information. The DNA is just information. Yeah. Well, let's just put other information in and get whatever protein out we want. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Right. first step is to read, second step is to write. So you're doing what Craig Mentor did, you know, famously recently, it's, uh, in the, on the computer, we're, we're rather not, than the wet lab. We're not, we're not doing that right now. I, no, 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 I know. But, yeah. but that's basically, you know, if, yeah, the dream. That's a, once you can read, then um, getting to a right step is obviously you know, uh, the next step, and then uh, all sorts of opportunities open up. Mm -hmm. That's right. I mean, you asked what, what, what motivates me about this. What motivates me about this is. The DNA sequencing is, is the next step in the development of this incredible tool. Oh. And the creation of this incredible tool is what, the, the end tool, which can be so much more incredible than what you can even talk about here, 
um, is, is so exciting. I mean, it's kind of cool. If you love tools and you like, you know, gizmos, it's the ultimate gizmo. It's the ultimate gizmo. Yeah. And you were talking earlier uh, with me, we were, um, you were talking about how biology is an information science, and we'll do more and more um, uh, as far with the software, as far as modeling. You want right, to you know, um, basically, right now you understand how a DNA sequence maps to an amino acid sequence and very roughly how it maps to a protein. But uh, you know, folding amino acids into proteins is a, a hard problem to model uh, in software. Um, but at the same time, processing power is still growing exponentially, right? Um, so uh, a few years down the road, you know, that processing power to do complete protein folding will be, will be there. And then from there, to do a complete cell modeling will be there. So if you can fold one protein, you can fold them all. You can take a DNA sequence and say, what does this cell look like that this is going to give me, right? You'll have a synthetic cell in software, right? And then you can look at it in real time. You'll see, okay, hey, let the software run the cell, okay? Now we're going to apply this drug. Well, what exactly does it do in the cell? Is it going to work? Is it not going to work? How does it interact? How does it affect this protein, okay? So instead of having to do all these experiments in the lab, you know, um, painstakingly, you have software start run these experiments, right? You know, and then, well, you can get from cells to multiple cells. You know, there's no limit, right? You know, the software continues. Um, uh, the, the processing power continues to grow exponentially, and and all, it ultimately becomes an information technology problem. So what Stefan just said may sound crazy, but it already happened. It already happened right here. There's a plaque on the wall right there to it. It happened, and that's what allowed the electronics industry to grow here. Exactly what he just said. The plaque on the wall is spice. Spice. 40th anniversary of spice. What he just described for biology is exactly what has already happened in electronics over the last 40 years. There's a plaque commemorating it, SPICE, simulation program with integrated circuit emphasis. That's the tool that, that allowed the integrated circuit world to move up that curve exponentially, the hmm. simulation tool. And Stefan is just saying, hey, there's going to come something like that for biology, and then it's going to march up that exponential curve. So we're like at the right place. This conference is exactly. <laughs> right yeah. at the right place. Yeah. And so pretty soon programmers are going to be Running biology. I mean, they already that, that, already bioinformaticians are more important than the than the lab guy. That's what our machine is going to eventually enable, right? It's DNA yeah. sequencing is just the first step. The yeah. next thing after that is, well, if if you've got a box that can fundamentally directly talk, quote unquote, to the molecules, mm -hmm. you get the software guy in there. Mm -hmm. Go to it. <laughs> no more just put it, We're in future and vision world here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just have a conversation, okay? <laughs> That's not what we're selling, right? But you asked what, you know, what got Roger excited, what gets me excited. You know, yeah. This is kind of where we think the industry will go, right? Yeah, we, we like to talk yeah. about these big yeah. ideas and mental problems. Yeah.